I'm going to create a ball rolling around a track. Uh, and to do this, we're going to first create a spline linear. We're going to go to our right menu. And I want to give some momentum to this spline. So I'm going to create it up a little bit higher here. Other thing, press P on your keyboard. I want to make 2D snappings enable so that our spline begins to draw along it. So select our spline. I'm going to come straight down where each one is. Two. And then I'm going to start to slope this out. Okay, Alt D if the axis is in your way. I'm going to come across and back up about halfway. Back down to create a little bump here. And then I'm going to go to my front menu. Hit O on your keyboard to kind of justify center that spline. And since I was coming back down, and I'm going to come across now. And then again, back down. Let's see, let's bring it right to here. And across. All right. So again, we're creating a ball that's going to be rolling along some tracks. Now, I just created an initial spline here. Um, don't need to label that or anything all four menus and you kind of see now how my spline rolls. It goes down, back up, across, so it gives me some three dimensionality. Again, this could be quite a bit more complex depending on what you wanted to do. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is create the splines that will create the track. So obviously we could use MoGraph, we could duplicate this. Uh, there's many different ways we can do this, but to get the um, spline so that it's even on all four of our tracks, uh, we're going to use a method of edge to spline. And so we're going to use a cube to do this. And we're also going to use a connect object as well as um, a spline wrap object. So add a cube, add a spline wrap feature here. And again, deformers are always our child or children of the objects that are affecting. So our cube object is quite a bit large here. I'm going to decrease its centimeter size to, uh, let's say, 50 for right now, 50 by 50 by 50. Keep it even for our case here and just leave it how it is. And then um, we're going to, that spline wrap is going to follow this spline. So we're going to drop that in there. Now if you can see this, it's going from one end to the other because there's no segments in between here. So select your cube. And let's increase the segments of our X to, say, 10. Nice and chunky and blocky. We don't need to smooth this out. We want to keep this as simple as possible. All right, uh, so now what we can do is we can either make this editable or connect this object. But the first thing that I want to do is soften this. And we're going to do that by taking our spline um, that we're utilizing to create here. Oops, not our spline. I'm sorry. Take our cube here. And we're going to add a connect object. So again, when we're using the array objects, connects, metaballs, um, that object becomes a child of that. All right, so now that connected object, which is connected to these, can now be made to a current state to object. And it's created its own object out here. All right, so select these that we've just created, Alt-G. And we're just going to uh, just leave it as a null for right now. You could label it later if you want, and then we'll go ahead and turn these off. We don't need to see these. And here's our connect object. Awesome. So now let's go to edge to spline on this. So go to edge tool, UL on your keyboard, and select both sides here. You might need to rotate it a little bit more. And then the shift key. All right. And then the last thing we need to do is deselect kind of these ends here. We don't need the spline, the spline down here connected. So spacebar. Live selection tool. Hold down the command key. Make sure that one of those little select elements is checked on. And make sure you didn't deselect anything on the other side. And we're going to go to the top and do the same thing. <clears throat> All right, so there's our edges that we want to turn to a spline. Simple structure at a spline edge to spline, and now we've created a four splines from that one object that are equal in terms of um, their spacing. Right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off that connect object now. 
Now, if you look at our splines, they're still very blocky. A ball would have a hard time rolling around as it bounce around very quickly. So we're going to soften this spline um, by going to either B spline or Akima. Um, you kind of choose which one will work best for you. And then making that form natural. Now, if you look at this now, you have a pretty darn smooth rail or track to go around. Again, you choose which one of these will be softest for you. There's Bezier, uh, Cubic, uh, but I tend to see the B spline is kind of being the softest here. Now, number of points, um, you can play with that in terms of how that affects that, but the lower the number, the less we have to, the less collisions we have to deal with in terms of the rendering speed. All right, last thing we need to do here is put this into a spline uh, sweep terms. And then we also need a diameter for those sweep nerves. So we're going to use a circle. And put that circle down to, say, 20 in diameter. And we're going to drag both the connect spline and the circle object. Now, if we look at that, it's pretty big piping there for our racks. So let's uh, make our circle a little smaller here. Let's make it 10, see what that looks like. Still a little thick. Let me bring it down to, say, 5. Oh, perfect. All right. So now we have our tracks. If we haven't yet done this, go ahead and uh, Command Shift S, save as ball and sphere, or label whatever you want to label it. A ball along track, maybe. Perfect. All right, so create the sphere now that we're going to be dropping into this. You can see it's quite a bit larger in diameter. And we'll be changing this up to kind of fit our needs. In all four menus here, let's start with this one first. We still have snapping enabled. Okay. Alt D to turn back on. And we're going to boom, boom, right in the middle there too. So now it looks pretty well centered here, here, and here in the top menus. Okay. Don't use your perspective menu to try to center it. It's way too difficult to get that to work. All right, if we look at it, actually that sphere's diameter could increase a bit more. So let's pop that up to say 30 cubic. Let's try 27, that looks pretty good. And we'll just, when we start playing our dynamics, if it gets stuck, we'll just decrease the size. So actually, it still looks a little bit big for me, so I'm gonna bring it down to 25. All right, so let's add our dynamics tags. Sweep nerves. Let's go ahead and go simulation, dynamics, okay. create collider, because that's what the object's going to be colliding with. And on a collision here, um, I'm just going to go to automatic mode dynamics, and I'm going to decrease the friction, um, or increase the friction here uh, of this object to say 60%. And we'll see what happens with that. And then we're going to go to sphere, Simulation, dynamics, create rigid body, not soft body, not at least not in this case. Okay. Um, automatic mode dynamics. Uh, go ahead and make it a compound collision shape. Uh, it's not affecting any elements below it, so we'll go ahead and leave that how it is. And then the friction of this object, let's turn this way down to say like 10%. And let's increase, um, instead of going with the default mass, Let's put a uh, custom density on this of, say, 100. The heavier the object, uh, the more likely it is to continue its momentum as it gets going. Right, so let's see what we've got here. Let's push play. Now, before I push play, um, you'll notice that as I push play, it has to kind of figure out the dynamics, and it may roll fine. Oh, it got stuck there. So what do we need to do? Let's decrease the size of that sphere. Rolls up and rolls back down. Pretty good, not bad. And as a matter of fact, we could probably start playing with the friction, bounce, and that sort of stuff of these other objects. So what happens if we make, for instance, the dynamics collision tag 10%? Now the ball doesn't roll at all, it just kind of slides through there. So 100%. Do we get more rolling? There we go, more natural. Much better. So I increase the friction, friction of the tracks and decrease the friction of um, our sphere or our ball. Now in this case, let's go ahead and pump the friction of, to 100% on our ball. Okay. 
I mean, it kind of stops short there, doesn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and decrease the friction to 30% on this one now. And it starts to slow down quite a bit again. So again, play with that, um, what looks more natural to you uh, and what will look more interesting. Now to see the sphere really roll, I'm just going to add a texture to this real quick. So new material, stop this to kind of see. There we go. Color, I'm going to go ahead, surfaces, checkerboard, and click on that. And I'm just going to change this to say kind of a gray. And this one to say an orange. There we go. So now when we kind of get ready to look at this a little bit closer, as long as our filter is showing material, or we're displaying textures, and as we get ready to render this out, you'll be actually able to see that roll. Whoops, got to apply the material to the sphere there. <laughs> so deselect everything here, and... can see that sphere move. All right, so that was real quick. Sometimes you need to increase the frame count so you can see it fall all the way through, especially if you have a longer spline. Be careful of getting uh, getting enough momentum here if you have larger loops for this to roll across. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is baking. Uh, and what baking can do is it can actually increase your simulation, especially once you have it set up so you don't have to wait. So I'm going to go to my cache here, click bake, and that bake that simulation and now that simulation has really no slowdown at all for the most part as it rolls along there. If I increase the frames, okay, it's going to fall out of there. Um, I may need to come back and rebake that simulation because it has to figure out all of those frames now. Okay, and so you could use that for your Rube Gold machine next week as we get started. Uh, just one element that you could add. What happens if you only have two tracks? And could you keep it on those tracks? So something interesting to play with. All right, enjoy.